Hey guys, so today I'm going to take you around all of our different learning spaces. So we do have one room that was a former toy room that we use as our homeschool organization room, but this room that you're looking at right now is where most of the learning happens. I love having a table that we gather around together for our morning basket time. And then we also have a little bookshelf with books related to what we're studying at the time sitting next to the table. So there's a lot of life and learning that happens around this table. We're also a musical family, so we have a section of our wall that's dedicated to all of our family's instruments, and every now and then we'll play some worship together, or when we're doing our hymn study, this comes in handy. This piano doesn't get a ton of use right now other than my daughter and my husband, but it's where we have our morning basket and where we keep our watercolors. Each of the kids have an individual set of watercolors in those cigar boxes on top of the piano. These two things are a couple of my favorite things in this room. That rocking chair has been passed down for the last couple of generations, and so it's really special reading books to my kids in that chair. And then that's a sign that I had custom made. I'll link the Etsy shop below. That has the lyrics to the song, A Prayer for the Home, and that song is basically my prayer for our homeschool room and our family in general. In the piano bench, the kids keep their pencil boxes and notebooks for our morning time. I don't know, I just don't like to have all those bright colors all over the place in a room that doubles as a family room. And then over in the corner is where Eli's kind of set up. So he has his play kitchen, Annabeth likes to play in there as well. And then these cube bins over there, that shelf is where I'm going to put a lot of his preschool activities that I'm gonna have him do independently while we're doing other work. I also have to the right there, that's where we keep our library books and we have our school supplies sitting on that top shelf for now. I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do with these, but for now it works. My hope for this area is that it will remain mostly cleared off so the kids can put their nature study findings, any work they wanna display, or any books that are seasonal or go along with what we're studying up there on the shelf. So I do need to find a place for those school supplies, but with a toddler in the house, I really can't keep them anywhere but up on a shelf. So right off of this room is where we keep all of our school storage, our homeschooling storage. Very rarely are we actually in here doing our learning, and this used to be a playroom. So right now it's mostly book storage and then office supplies and then the computer and all of that is in here as well. So over in this area, I keep most of our learning toys and puzzles. What you see right there is the filing system that I use as far as keeping and storing work and preparing work. And then we have that bin, which is all of their STEM type of toys. So any building toys and things along those lines are up in that bin. All of our shelves are labeled. And I know some of you guys have been asking me about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and explain to you shelf by shelf here, how I have them labeled and set up for the time being. So the top shelves are dedicated to curriculum. They're kind of my staging area. The first two shelves are our individual curriculum choices and our family curriculum choices. The third shelf are the workbooks that I like to rotate through our morning basket. And the fourth shelf is dedicated to any books that I've pulled off the shelf and set aside for a specific unit study. Shelf number one here, that's labeled number one, those are all five in a row and holiday titles. Shelf number two are poetry and bedtime books. Number three are our family's nonfiction book collection. And number four are our family read aloud. So any books that I've pulled off the shelf that I don't want the kids reading on their own because I want to read aloud together. Number five are for Usborne Lift the Flat books and then some preschool books. Number six are more Usborne books, the Shine -a Lights and the big books and things like that. Number seven are all of our geography books. And number eight is our Bible books. Shelf number 9, 10, 11, and 12 are the books that they have access to all the time. So those are books they can pull off the shelf at any time. So the first one are all of the early phonics readers. The second one is for chapter books. The third one is for picture books. And then the fourth one are baby books. And Annabeth loves going over there and grabbing the books off the shelf. Most of her books are over the floor all the time. And then I also have a little bin at the bottom of the bookshelf where they just put books that need to go back on the shelf. And then one of their chores every few days is to go and put the books back. That's why I have them labeled by number instead of by the Dewey Decimal System. That's because I just want them to be able to say, oh, number one matches shelf number one. So it makes it easier for them. And then next to the go back bin there, that's just some stuff that I'm organizing for the school year. 
I really wanted to have an area where they could come in and read, especially during their quiet time. I need to split the kids up between the bedrooms. I don't really want them all to be in the same room. So this is another area where they can just come in and read and have some alone time if they need to. Then on the other side of the room, this side just isn't so pretty. This is where we have all of our charts, our posters. This is where they do their teaching textbooks math. This is where I have a bunch of organization and just all sorts of stuff going on. So next to my computer desk, I have these shelves. These are the shelves that I put Eli's work. I print off his work. I cut whatever needs to be cut up. And then I lay, put them in order Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to do. And then the bottom one is for done. So he will go in there, pull out his work, and he can put it in the bottom bin when he's done with that. Over here, again, make it work, right? I don't like to buy a ton of organization stuff, especially since I have so many boxes and bins laying around. So this is where I have the not so pretty stuff hanging up. So at the top shelf here, you can see I have all of our craft kits. We do have an area where we keep art supplies, but this is like the craft kits that are more specific for homeschooling. The next shelf here are for our early education puzzles, our preschool and baby puzzles and then group supplies. So group supplies are things like pointers, headphones, anything that I pull out when we're doing any sort of group activity. Um, you can see we have those sights and sound buzzers for when we're playing games and those reading comprehension dice and just the things that don't really have another place in our schoolroom all go in this box here. Below that shelf, I have a shelf where I keep our preschool type of manipulatives and then also all of our preschool learning games. So everything that I've shown you from, oh, excuse my hands there, I've got paint all over my hands, so sorry about that. But everything that I've showed you from the reading corner and Let's Play School is in a box on that bottom shelf. So this is where I have all of my preschool type of supplies. This other section of shelving is where I have all of our old portfolios, office supplies, paper, the laminator, my binding machine, and all the things that go along with that. Anything that I consider school type of materials are kind of over on this shelf. I also have some baskets and bins that I'll rotate some of the babies' toys and um, the preschool toys through. And then I also have a section over here that are specific toys for the baby if we ever get around to doing some tot school. So as you can see, I need to bulk this up a little bit. So that's where the majority of our learning and storage happens. I'm gonna send you on over to our giveaway. So today's giveaway is a $50 gift certificate to my Usborne store. This is a gift provided by me, so I'm excited about this one. We have tons of awesome books. These new Academy books are amazing. We've got fiction books, nonfiction books, really fun books that kind of spruce up your homeschool, the maze books, some really cute little first reference books, some beautiful fiction books are illustrated so beautifully, and then some really fun early chapter books, and even some middle grade fiction. We have so many fun Lift the Flat books, but I think the Lift the Flat math books are some of my favorite right now because all of my kids have one that really works for them. My preschooler has Lift the Flat sizes and measurement, and he also has Lift the Flat first math, and it's really spot on as far as his age level goes. My son has the Lift the Flap addition and subtraction, and then my daughter has this multiplication and division one, and I just purchased fractions and decimals. There's Lift the Flap periodic table, Lift the Flap atlases, art books, science books, etc. So make sure you browse the website and see everything that's going on there. Another one of my favorites are these Academy books. These are really great for kids, especially if they're like around eight, nine, 10 years old, who are a little too old for some activity books that you would find at the grocery store, but they really want something challenging and fun. I love these Academy books. The info for this giveaway is in the description box below, and I cannot wait to see who wins and what you guys choose from the store. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today and kind of taking a peek at our schoolroom. Let me know if you guys have a dedicated schoolroom in your home or if you're kind of like us and you're learning all over the house. I'll see you guys tomorrow.